Hello, hi. So we are on topic five and we're going to look at this section here now, the equity bar with one risk factor. So there's just one portfolio beta, which you know how to calculate from topic one. All right, um, let me do a full screen mode. And recall this um, single index model where you just have one risk factor. In topic one, we looked at the case where XT were the returns on the S&P 500 and YT were the returns on Apple and we estimated the beta, the beta hat was about 1.16 or 1.17. Um, we didn't save the residuals, but they, are, so they allow us to quantify the specific or the idiosyncratic risk. Um, and we could use the variance of the residuals, the um, S squared, which is the square of the standard error of the regression, the standard error which we looked at in topic one Excel spreadsheet um, is uh, the standard deviation of the error term, the estimated standard deviation of the error term. And then if we've got that, it's like a standard deviation we can use in the normal VAR formula if we want. So we have our usual quantile, something like um, 2.33 for a 1% VAR times S times the square root of H. In our case, we had weekly term, uh, weekly returns, so H was 52, okay? And this is under the assumption that this X and Y are normally distributed. If X is normally distributed, so will be Y. And then we can assume that the errors are normally distributed and therefore use the normal linear VAR. That's how we get the specific or idiosyncratic risk. In this case, if we use a different model, like the historical model, we'd have to calculate it a different way. So let's focus on the normal linear VAR model still. And the risk measurement always focuses on the systematic part of the portfolio return most of the time. Um, and the alpha estimate is some number like 0 0.002 or something like that, depending on your sample. But whatever it is, it's just a number, just a constant, so it doesn't have a variance. And the variance, the risk, or the VAR, which is very closely related to the variance, um, is coming from the second term only. Only We need to look at the, um, for example, the systematic VAR. In this case, we'd call it the equity VAR, because it's an equity risk factor an equity portfolio. So the systematic VAR is just beta hat times the VAR of the risk factor or the market index VAR. And if we suppose that this market index returns are normally distributed, we just use the normal linear model for X. So for example, if um, this mu hat um, was, um, uh, estimated from say daily returns, um, then we would use H to be um, our parameter, our holding period. It could be 10 days, pretty often it is. So H would be 10 if we've got daily returns. If we've got weekly returns and we want an H of 10, a uh, holding period of 10, then H would be two because weekly returns are um, every five days. So we would calculate the mu hat for the holding period and the sigma hat for the holding period. Don't forget the sigma hat uses the square root of h. And then the market bar, that's this second term here, calculated using the standard formula for the normal linear bar model. And we just pre-multiply that by um, our beta estimate, 1.17 or whatever it is, to get the equity VAR. Here's some numbers to help you understand the concepts that I've just shown you um, in uh, equations. 
So suppose a portfolio contains cash positions on two stocks. One million is invested in a stock with a beta of 1.2 and two million is invested in a stock with a beta of 0.8. Both betas are res with respect to a broad market index like the S&P 500. Suppose the excess returns on the index are IID and normally distributed and the expectation per annum is 5% and the volatility is 20%. Calculate the 1% 10 day equity bar of the portfolio. So um, the portfolio beta needs to be calculated first and we know that that's the weighted sum of the stock betas. So we've got 1 million and 2 million, a total of 3 million invested. So the portfolio weights are one third and two thirds on the two different stocks. And so the beta is one third times 1.2 plus two thirds times 0.8. Once we get our portfolio beta, then we multiply that by the, um, the index var. Okay, let's have a look at it on the next slide. So the net portfolio beta, um, that can either be measured in dollars terms or down here, I've looked at the portfolio beta at the end as a percentage beta, 0.93. There's more than one way to calculate the results here. But if we use a dollar beta, we just multiply the dollar amounts times the beta, and that gives you a dollar beta of 2.8. And then multiplying 2.8 times here in step three, the market index VAR will give us the VAR immediately in dollar terms. So let's have a look for the risk factor. This market index risk factor has a 10 day return. The expected excess return is going to be, well, we have to divide by 250 and multiply by 10 to turn something 5% per annum into a 10 day return. So that's 0.2%. And for the standard deviation, again, we use 10 over 250, but now the square root of it to turn our volatility of 20% or 0.2 into a 10 day standard deviation. And that's 0.04 or 4%. And now we can calculate our 1% 10 day equity VAR. 1% means we use 2.33 or 2.32635 to be precise for our phi to the minus one, one minus alpha factor, times the sigma h minus the mu h, and then multiply the whole thing by 2.8 million, and the result is a little over a quarter of a million. Now, we could have just used the um, percentage beta of 0.93 to get a percentage var, and then multiply the percentage var by 3 million and we would have got the same result. Because this is already a percentage bar. This is where the dollars comes in. But if we'd use 0.93 here and the same thing here, and then the result here multiplied by 3 million, we would have got the same thing. What about the historical model? Well, remember, historical simulation needs a time series, and we do that on the market index returns. Just we don't need a time series for the portfolio. As long as we've got a current estimate of the portfolio beta, that's all we need. And we're going to use the historical model here for the market VAR, multiply it by the portfolio beta, and that will give us the equity VAR. But now the market VAR is calculated not using the normal linear model, but using historical simulation. So here's a spreadsheet where we've got the Apple and the S&P 500 again, as we had in topic one. And we've got our beta, there's different data here. Um, the data are um, giving a beta of 1.12. And the S&P historical VAR, which is based on these returns using the percentile function, turns out to be 10.89%. The apple, just using the percentile function on column D, turns out to be 20.96%. That's for a 10 day holding period at a significance level of 1%. But the 
Apple idiosyncratic bar and the equity bar can be calculated using these two figures and the portfolio beta. I'll explain that when I do a video just for this Excel spreadsheet. And in order to calculate this idiosyncratic bar, you can't see the formula I've used there, it's very blurry in this picture. But if we look at this slide, this explains how we can get the specific bar from the historical model um, using an approximate, it's not exactly correct, but the equity variance plus the specific variance, ignoring any covariance is the total variance. And so the, to put another way, the specific variance is the total variance minus the equity variance. And then if we substitute variance for VAR, I know that's not correct in historical model, but that's one way we can do it. Um, we can just use this formula, that, which is based on the formula for variance um, and turn it into a formula for VAR. So have a look at the Excel spreadsheet for this example for more information. That's it for this particular video. Now I'm going to do the Excel spreadsheet.